Welcome to the Kyra Station, where chiropractors share their stories and lessons learnt in practice. The intention of the Kyra Station is to provide resources and a community that will help chiropractors realize their innate potential. So join the Kyra Station today. In this episode, I catch up with Dr. Lemon and she provides insight in what it's like to practice in Singapore. What I loved learning from this conversation is that people and chiropractic is the same no matter where you are in the world or what language you are speaking. Lemin shares what it takes to practice in Singapore, what the culture is like, and what the chiropractic scene is like in Singapore. So enjoy this conversation with Lemin. So how's the last year been? What have you been up to? Um, Life of Lemin, moving home would have been quite nice, I imagine. Yeah, it's been really like um, full of like everything so graduation so before graduation i did up um i did my last hiking trip in new zealand as a sort of a farewell nice. uh, and then i came home christmas chinese new year graduation trip with my parents over the south island came home waited for about a week or two before i worked so uh that would have been mid march i was supposed to start work in the beginning of march but then i i uh, started in the middle of march instead um and then pretty much i was just working since then lots of new kind of yeah like practicing in singapore is definitely different um, and then in back in this December last year, my principal Cairo went back to the US. So I'm pretty sure most of us had um, experiences like this as well, where someone in our practice goes away for like a month or something, and you'll have to see a lot more patients and then be on your own and get the independence that you need. So that's pretty much what happened last December. And then here we are. Yeah. So that's professional. Like personally, it's just been like getting to know all my relatives and friends and building friendships all over again. Yeah. Um, and it's a little bit sad as well because I missed Tina's wedding and I missed um, quite, a, quite a few things, you know, for the closer people in Auckland. Yeah. Well, I guess that is the hard thing about moving overseas because you do kind of have to because you come here and you set up a life you know you make connections yeah. with people at college and you become really good friends and then all of a sudden moving back it's like you have to start your life up again and figure out how does this work <laughs> yeah i actually had to learn how to become singaporean again like it was part of my <laughs> i knew what it meant to be a singaporean you know how it felt but i sort of in my last year um Auckland, I actually really got used to life there, and I mm. just, um, yeah, like, I could have stayed in Auckland and been completely happy. So, mm. yeah. And then when I came back, um, I sort of had to tell myself that I was in Singapore for 20 years of my life, and only in Auckland for four, yeah. and not, so, <laughs> not the other way around. So, um yeah, it's just been interesting because like, as an adult, I guess probably those four years like made me grow up a lot. So probably as an adult, when you look at um, Singapore and when you look at people and all that, it changes quite a bit. Because hmm. when you're young, you're just like, oh, this is life and this is the way it's supposed to be. And then uh, obviously New Zealand and you know Kiwis are very different, the way they think and do stuff. And politics and everything. Yeah. So, so and then you... I came back. Like, like, that's what Singapore is like. These yeah. Things are the things that we do. <laughs> yeah, that would have been really interesting, actually, going going back with fresh eyes and and almost having a little bit of culture shock. Like, oh, well, that's really different from what I'm used to now. Oh my god, culture shock! Like reverse culture shock. 
<laughs> Reverse culture shock. Um, I remember kind of like halfway through college, um, I went back home once and I was meeting a friend who was doing medicine in Melbourne. So we sort of left, left Singapore for the same amount of time, like her a little bit longer than me. Um, and then I, we were going along the public transport, like, uh, which is the common mode of transport here, I might add. So, <laughs> and so I, I, we were just like coming out of the train and then going into one of the malls and both of us just felt so claustrophobic. We were just like, oh my God, like there's people, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. And then we just had to go to a corner and then sort of breathe and tell ourselves that this is normal. Anyway, so that was three years ago now. Yeah. And then sometimes when I get off the bus, I feel the urge to say, thank you, driver. Thanks, driver. When I, like, you know, everyone will just look at you like, what the heck are you doing? That's crazy talk. Whereas here, that's just completely normal. Yeah. And and would that be the would that be quite similar with the the patients and then the people that you interact with as well? Is that quite different, or have you found that to be different? Yeah. I have found it to be extremely different, but I also don't know what it's like to practice in Auckland. Hmm. So I wouldn't know too much about the differences. But I, what I would say is that yeah, like culture wise, people don't ask the same questions. Hmm. Like the kind of um, yeah, I'm sure. Like you get asked questions about like I don't know. Do you ever get asked questions about chiropractic and stroke or chiropractic and the wrist? No. Never. N- never yeah. comes up. Just like a huge thing in college, right? Like yeah. I don't even know what I'm going to it, but um, yeah, like people, I I sort of maybe feel like it's a little bit more discerning of crowd in Auckland and um, you have these posters on the wall where there's like what's the, the thing called when um, if you have the thing that you don't know if your parents doing right or like, you need to know your rights and sure. you know, report to this what, what do they call it like disability commission yeah whatever. it's the disability commission is, is basically or, yeah. or the CDC it's the complaints tribunal but, exactly so we have nothing like that here and then we have no posters on the wall telling them and stuff um, and in, in general I think like uh, people are just um, they don't ask very sharp like very cutting questions that they might do like people who are really in the medical model they might ask you for like some of your opinions regarding like medicine and how it works together but because in Singapore there's TCM traditional Chinese medicine and um, in the 70s there was like a clash between like TCM and the Western medicine and everything. But then in like past, I don't know, like 10, 20 years, um, MOH, Ministry of Health, has actually sort of accepted them. So if you were to go to a hospital, um, like the hospital directly across from where we work, um, they have a TCM department for like fertility issues and like, wow. um, like, like cancer and stuff. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. So, yeah, and it's okay. Part of it is medical tourism, but traditional Chinese medicine is actually pretty legitimate, in my opinion. Um, obviously, not you know, it's just like chiropractic. Like, not every single thing you hear is right and all that. But um, and so people are a lot more open, and there's a lot more like traditional bone standards and um, uh, sort of like all sorts of different modalities floating around. Yeah, so people are very accepting, but then what they really want to know, like they're very, very focused, like they probably really want to know if you can help with a specific condition, hmm. like because that's what TCM is all about, like if you have gout or if you have like uh, infertility or digest- digestion issues, then you go and then you get specific clubs, you get specific like music and, and your power sticker and everything um yeah so they're probably more like open but also they want to know like i have this condition you can help with it 
And, and how do you get around that? Do you just ex- explain to them kind of in the way that we were taught at the New Zealand College or, or have you kind of augmented like or changed the way that you talk to match that a little bit? Yeah, you definitely have to change the way you talk in terms of like explaining things. And I, in the first few months, I really struggled because first of all, confidence, like I didn't really have it's, of as course. much confidence. Yeah, yeah um, we all go through then, that. Yeah, and also because I was doing one of the, one of the so we left, so I was, um, it was just me and the principal Cairo, and then like, um, they had their expectations based on what they were used to. Um, and so in the beginning, I would just explain it in a way that I would explain it in a way, which wouldn't really work for them. like. I could tell that they were really interested in the way I was trying to explain it. Um, but then my physical career actually really helped because I had all these different kind of canals and the um, I guess the Singaporean would really understand. Yeah. So hmm. it's just about understanding where they're coming from, um, the sort of values that most of the people do have. Um, and the way they approach things, like, because I was very used to, um, sort of, okay, so the kind of being Asian probably is that <laughs> you see um, the faults more than you do the good things. Um, and that's evident in like parenting and like um, life in school and everything, like, to do well in school and everything. So anyway, yeah. part of that is that when people get well, they don't tell you. They tell you what's left. Right. So like, yeah. if they have low back pain, knee pain, neck pain, headaches, and all of that is gone except for knee pain, guess what they'll tell you? They'll tell you, hey, <laughs> I have knee pain today. And then they lie down. So yeah. part of that is just getting around the fact that people don't see things like, the way I was used to, maybe, <laughs> but yeah. but then you just have to sort. Of, um, but I guess you know, because you've been working there for a while now, and you kind of understand that culture a little bit, you can get that. Oh, yeah, I am helping with this other stuff. They're just not really talking about it. But that's it's not because they're not aware of it. They're just not talking yeah. about it. Would that yeah, be right? Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, which is why she has said, like I remember she has been having like lots of Asian patients for some reason because like. Yeah. He like knows all the Asian stuff. Like he's very familiar with it. Anyway, so when he was, Funny. I don't know if he's still in practice, but anyway, he has like he was in this area where there's a lot of Chinese people were referring patients to him. And then what he would do is just like get them to break their pain, which is what we do at college, right? But I never understood why she has not like pain your pain now. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then anyway, so he would just be like, look, if you've improved. You know, in the pain scale, it's a difference in intensity and frequency, but you just think that it's still there, which it is, but we're just still going to make improvements, like, slowly, but it's mm. kind of hard for them to that. They're just like, but it's still there. <laughs> so then, then for you, just to double check, because definitely for me in Auckland, a majority of my patients are coming in with, I have neck pain or, or back pain basically is like the, the most common thing and then my referrals they'll they'll come in for different reasons because they'll see the benefits yeah. that my other patients have had and is that quite similar for you as well in Singapore yeah yeah so most people come in for pain related things or um, a lot of posture related things as hmm. well yeah come on um, and that's also due to the fact that the profession in Singapore is like largely posture based hmm. and that's um, you know, some uh, uh, like practice methods, like, I don't know how you guys do the do the um, like sort of like pricing models I guess I would say yeah, you guys, like how many visits are allowed to be like sold at once for in Auckland or like usually people do per visit right? Yeah, it's, I think it's most yeah. common per visit or, or sometimes what um, some clinics do, ours doesn't, but a lot of them, they'll do like a, you get two visits for free if you buy a 12 pack type thing. So to say it's 50 bucks, it's like $600, yeah. you get it for 500 if you prepay right. 
type deal. So like chiropractic for the before I came to Singapore, uh, before I came to Auckland, um, uh, the chiropractic thing in Singapore was pretty much ninety percent by big packages. Right. Meaning they would do huge road shows and then um, sort of um, arguably, you know, likely some hard selling, um, and then practically everyone ninety more than ninety five percent get the X ray taken, even if they're kids, and then you just sort of show the X ray and tell them about the spine, and then the packages are like in the vicinity of like 70, 90, 100 visits, um, which is, if you work it out, it's like thousands of dollars. Hmm. Um, and so, and then the individual kind of visits, they would cost probably like 80 to 150, which is still the market rate now, like 80 to 150 per visit. Um, uh, how did I come on this topic? Um, right, so the thing is, um, because of the methods that people use, like they do a lot of posture related things. So um, they take an x ray of you in the beginning of the year, and then maybe they repeat a cervical x ray in the middle, and then maybe a lumbar at the end of the year, and then they sort of compare and then say, oh, you know, your posture is improved. This is the way it's supposed to be. That's the whole idea of CBP. And it has yeah, I was going to say that that, that that sounds very much like CBP stuff. Sorry, can you repeat that, please? Yeah, that, that sounds a lot like C, CBP stuff because my primary Kent, he does a lot of that as well. Yeah. So, um, but CBP can be done without the large packages, right? Yeah, he doesn't do the large packages. He just uses the analysis package for looking at x-rays. Yeah. So CBP is awesome, but maybe because it really melt, like goes together with the way the pricing is. Yeah. So like... People do tend to earn quite a bit, I guess. So, like most of the practices here do CBP and posture related things and big packages. So, when people come to find us, it's always like similar things like, oh, you know, um, like uh, first of all, cost. And then they're going to be like uh, concerned about their posture. Like, maybe they've been told that they have generation it's going to be really bad or like, you know, um, like, uh, I, I don't know, just, just a lot of posture, a lot of mm. posture kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And so, um, yeah, answering your question, <laughs> people come in for a lot of posture related things and then yeah. maybe they don't use like the term terminology wise, like, um, for our practice at least we don't um, we're not, a pick, not too picky with the terminology like we don't like argue between the difference between a subluxation or a misalignment we just sort of tell them in a very um, uh, I guess enough for them to get the idea of it, the big idea yeah, um, yeah so and for me, I guess that's kind of something I'm quite curious about with the language transition. How has that been for you in terms of, because in Auckland, you would have been talking about things in English and the concepts would have come across that way. Whereas in Singapore, obviously you're speaking a different language, you're interacting with different people. How has that changed things? So the previous Cairo that I was probably replacing. She is American hmm. and my principal Cairo is American. So actually the majority of the patients that our practice was seeing was actually English speaking. Oh, and so that was Yeah. In Singapore like the main language of like uh, business and, and, and school and everything of of, of the professional language is is English. Um so I didn't have too much problems with that front. But um, then because I was joining the company, we started getting like all sorts of patients who spoke Mandarin, which was great because some of them may not have maybe started care because it's just like a huge language barrier. Hmm. Um, uh, so for me, 
it wasn't too much of a hassle actually because when I was in Auckland, um, I purposely went ahead to do like this health talk with this the Auckland, um, what is it? Positive Aging, Chinese Positive Aging Society, um, where I, me and Tina, we like prepared for a whole health talk in Mandarin and then like we translated that every day and then I learned how to say disc and vertebra and substation and like any intelligence in Chinese. So then I, or in Mandarin, I should say, and then I could use that for talking over here as well. But I will say a lot of what I do is simplified in terms of communication, if it's in Chinese, like, um, like enough for them to really understand the core of what we do, but not at the kind of intellectual level that, like, um, you might achieve with English. Yeah. Well, I would say, I mean, honestly, with my patients, it's very simple. I don't really talk about massive, large concepts. Like I'll use the term subluxation, but as long as my patients basically understand that it means yeah. that their body's not working good and there's something wrong mm -hmm. and I'm going to help them, that's it. Like that's, that's all I need them to understand. And, and then as they continue through their care, they'll gain better understanding and knowledge about it. But it's basic, basic, basic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so... Um, of, of course, you get the different patients who have, you know, a lot more understanding about health. Hmm. You know, occasionally you get a well-read person who knows, you know, about different concepts. Um, and then for our clinic, we also um, sometimes venture into like, um, like we. I always tell my patients that, you know, if you take care of your body, it'll take care of you. So like eating well, sleeping well. Um, moving well, all those things. So we just like, just like chat about that, and it's pretty simple, I guess, to do with Chinese. That, that sounds very, very similar to what I'm doing. So that's yeah. cool. That's yeah. because I mean, it's not too hard what we do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that that was something that I was really, really curious about learning today is because my my assumption would be it's still people. It's all people. It, it, the the body's not really different. The location might be yeah. different. The language might be a little bit different, but it's still people. So I, I kind yeah. of thought the stuff would be the same, but I, I wasn't actually sure. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear that it is. Yeah. yeah. And what, so if if someone came to you and was asking for advice saying, look, I'm, I'm thinking about going and practicing in Singapore, um, what would you, what would you tell them? Oh, okay. So it depends on if they are Singaporean or a PR. Uh, so the rules, I guess, would be that, um, so like, first off, for admin purposes, getting a visa, you know, getting allowed to practice here, they've been really strict in the past two years, um, letting people in to practice. So much more strict than before. Like, in the beginning, it was just like, oh, you have a degree, show me your certificate, specialist degree, master's degree, whatever. And then you can practice. I guess with like a little bit more like conflict or like questions that people ask, they want to get more information from you. And it's not very transparent. Like it's not like you need write documents. If you fulfill these categories, you'll be able to get in. Um, so you probably need to just apply for that work permit. No, that's not. It's called employment pass. Mm -hmm. um, so you do need to have an active license from your country. So, like, say for New Zealanders, you have to have the license from the CEA or something. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. So you do have to have your license. Um, and then they'll get you to give them all your grades as well. Um, and then you'll be under MOM, so Ministry of Manpower, that's what controls who comes in and out and then the Ministry of House sort of knows you exist because you have a, an employment pass and you are a registered clinic. So uh, then if you're know, Singaporean or PR actually you can skip all of that um, thing with MOM and just start working and then with MOH they know you exist because you're an employee. Hmm. 
Mm. Um, and then in terms of the registration process, because you don't have a board, do you? Or, or do you have an association? Uh, we do have an association, like a very small association. Um, and yeah, like they've been in, this is as far as I know, um, they've been in talks with the government about regulating the profession and hmm. you know, sort of talking about what other things that people should be looking at for in a chiropractor and that kind of thing. But I think MOH is slightly reluctant to regulate it, I guess, because it's such a hassle that we have graduates from, <laughs> from like all these different countries who've been working in Singapore for all these years. And it's just impossible to be like, we need this, <laughs> you know? Of course. Um, because uh, how many how many carpenters do you think there are in Singapore? Uh, probably more than a hundred. Okay, but um, but the population's huge, right? Huge, yeah. So that's another difference, I would say, the yeah. difference between um, any other place. Yeah, like we have, I don't know, maybe I know by twenty twenty we'll have seven million. So hmm. right now we're probably in between like five or six or something okay. like that. Um, and then five or six million people in a country that used to be the size of Taupo, Lake Taupo, I might add. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we grew because we were and That's right. The land's not big enough. We're going to make some more. That's smart. That's yeah. smart. And the funny, the funny thing is we buy the stuff from Indonesia. Oh, and really? Then, yeah, and then um, and from other places. And then um, we pack it in our soil, and then the tides and the waves like sort of like push it a little bit more every year. And then sort of like 10 years later, whatever it might be, then we buy a bit from them again. <laughs> it's a good business model. Anyway. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. So I'd, I'd really love to hear some stories, some experience that you've, that experiences that you've had over the last year practicing Singapore. Like what's a, what's a really kind of fantastic story that you remember, a patient that you're really, really happy with? Oh, there's quite a few. There's quite a few. There is this one guy who, um, okay, so he, I don't know if you remember, but there was a point in time where I had some free time and I was motivated enough to take photos with my patients and then like write a short blog about them. If they I remember that. Um, I thought it was great. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. I enjoyed reading them. Yeah, it was fun. It was just sort of giving people a teaser about what kind of it is and hmm. um, all of that. So this guy, he came in with neck pain, low back pain. He was a policeman. He's very funny. Um, and then he got adjusted on a Friday, came back for a second adjustment on a Tuesday. And so so during our initial ride, I was just talking to him about like what else is going on other than pain in body. It's like constitution. So <laughs> basically he says that he's had it for more than ten years. He goes like every four days or something like that, like three to five days. Yeah. It's just horrible because like just the thought of it makes me cringe. Yeah. And um, so he got adjusted on Friday, came back on a Tuesday, and then on Friday I saw him again, and then he was just like, 7 a.m. So basically he like went to bathroom, like, like clockwork, from Wednesday to Friday morning, like 7 a.m., 7 a.m., 7 a.m. That's just, awesome. Yeah, I was <laughs> just like, oh my god, I can't believe that this is happening. And then like, how am I supposed to tell this to other people without like sort of embarrassing him? Yeah. And so I sort of just told people that he had digestion issues. <laughs> yeah. And so that was, yeah. Nice. That's good enough. <laughs> but like, how cool is that though? Like a guy comes in with back pain and then ends up having constipation being sorted out. That's awesome. Yeah, and then I sort of asked him like, hey, like, um, you know, have you had this, you know, like, I, I don't know what I was like, uh, oh, right, right, because... I was like telling him, look, I usually see, would probably see this in infants, hmm. but it's like kind of amazing that you're like, <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, and then there was this other girl who was, um, 
14, and then she came in with like no back pain for a year, and then she had numbness and tingling, and she had um yeah just pain and numbness and tingling, and then at the end I was like, do you have anything else? And she said, oh you know occasionally I get like foot pain um after I do hockey or whatever play hockey um. And then anyway, we did all the tests, so she had like some muscle weakness as well. Um, so everything pointing to like a specific discrimination rather than like like um, anything else. Um, and then that was also like pretty cool because I was like telling the parent like I don't know how this long how long this will take and we'll just see how it goes. And then she just got better after one visit, like. The next visit, I tested her strength, like her foot strength. Hmm. I was like, oh my god, okay, cool. And then, and then her dad was so happy that he was everybody. Perfect. But that, that's that's the wonderful stories, isn't it? I mean, that, that's the kind of magic and power of chiropractic, right? You switch them back on, and then it's amazing what the body can do. And then I told I told people like I wish they were all fourteen, so sad. we can all do all, all of that. Um, but then, yeah, it becomes like a really good tool when you're talking to practice as well. Just, yeah. you know, just say like, look, we're not all 14 and I wish that I can provide you with like a magic adjustment that solves all your problems for the rest of your life and it magically takes all your problems away. But I can't. So, yeah. <laughs> because if I could, I would charge one million dollars. Yeah, exactly. And you sort of. need all your pills. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny because I I say exactly the same thing. Look, you've you've been around, you've been dealing with gravity for longer. Things have worn out. You've just been dealing with more stuff, and it just takes longer for your body to heal. It's, we'll still get you there. It just takes a while. And coming back to that, right? I think um, it took me some time to like get around, get my head around like um, the things that we talked about in college. All these things that we I used to say to my patients in college, but then when I came out to practice, my principal Cairo, he was educated in the US, and then he's obviously been in practice for like much, much longer than I I have. Hmm. So his way of speaking is vastly different from my like the way he communicates. And so for a while I felt like because I was learning from him and then I was like should I just forget about some of this stuff that I learned in school mm. and then should I just be more like him um, and so it's sort of like finding your own way of talking right like yeah. your own style of adjusting and talking and yeah. everything um, yeah and so I told him I, told, I said like look I do feel like I'm acting in some ways <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but then he says, and he's right. He says, like, oh, it's fine because, you know, you just like learn all this new stuff, so you might feel like you're becoming me <laughs> for a little bit. But then afterwards, of course, you like find a good balance and like, you know, find your own style. Exactly. Well, I think that's a really big part of it, and it's definitely what I've been through over the last year, is just trying to figure out who I am as a chiropractor, because you can't help but pick up things from your primary, because you're spending all day, every day with them, but you have this kind of personality and this style and way of being with patients, which is, it, it is you, it's uniquely you, um, and I suppressed that for a really long time, and as soon as I stopped, as soon as I just acted like myself, it was so much better. I connected with people better. I shared patient stories, which was really nice, and just helped connect me with the patients, and that made a really, really big difference. Well, what um, kinds of things were you trying not to do? Like, what were you kind of trying to suppress? Oh, like, I, was, I was just like very much like Dr. Ben mode. Like everything's official and very formal, and <laughs> this is exactly how we do things. And yeah, it was all just very kind of compartmentalized because that's that's how I could deal with things and feel comfortable with my own insecurities and worrying about studying practice and whatnot. Um, whereas as soon as I just kind of got over that, just with having enough time and realizing that I'm actually good at this and you know I'm I will be a very very good chiropractor and I'm a pretty decent chiropractor now. Um, so as soon as I kind of got there, it, all that kind of extra stuff just went away. And then I could be a lot more relaxed and laughed with my patients. And um, yeah, it was just way better, way, way better. 
I found that um, because probably being in New Zealand, which is like one of the big things I think New Zealand is, I think it's a strength as well, is that um, it's like very respectful and like a lot of, uh, how do I put it? A lot of Singaporeans are very loud and we talk more like in your face. Yeah. <laughs> and then whereas like in New Zealand, it's sort of like, was a little bit more reserved. Yeah. At least when they're not drinking. And <laughs> yeah. Sort of like um, uh, respectful and nice and like like sort of like these are the facts and this is what I know and then you can make your own decision, right? Mm. But in Singapore, it's more like if you don't talk loudly and in your face and like like sort of more expressive, <laughs> more punch when you talk. They sort of don't think you're confident and they sort mm. of don't think that you are, that you know what you're doing. And especially as a young female who's more petite than they think a chiropractor should be, it's tough. Like, it, yeah, it was quite a big struggle in the beginning and then I had to find like, I also changed, I guess, because my personality, like, probably was more quiet when I was in New Zealand. And then when I came back, I realized, like, everyone's loud. Like, if you go get a bowl of noodles, the auntie, like, the hawker ball person, like, yells at you, and, what do you want? <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't want noodles. Stop yelling at me. <laughs> it's so confronting. <laughs> You just think that people are rude, but they're not. It's just like normal. Yeah. <laughs> and so I found that in practice, I sort of found a little bit, I found it helpful to um, remember what it was like before I went to New Zealand, before I was a lot more quiet and like polite and reserved and just sort of be, like you say, yourself and open and be loud if you need to be i guess mm. yeah yeah definitely well i think people kind of resonate that because they, they resonate with your passion because if you get excited about something generally you're louder about it and yeah. or you know louder more expressive you use a lot more hand gestures you laugh more you smile you interact and i think people really appreciate that um and as yeah. soon as they see that you're really like energy. yeah exactly um, and yeah, it's like referrals start coming in and referrals are just the best. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, for me, that was just a big kind of key that I finally figured out. Yeah, they are the best. Hmm. Yeah. Well, no competition. <laughs> <laughs> no competition, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, I find that um, I was, I am a local, so like I already have a network, which is very different from starting out in junior clinic. No, in a clinic where, oh, ooh, I should say chiropractic. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah, like starting out in third year, like really terrified, but as a class collectively being actually terrified, um, it's just vastly different when you have people that you know and they kind of know who you are and they, you know, word of mouth between them because everybody knows everybody anyway. That's definitely one of the best things about, like, uh, you know, not having to do so much marketing. Mm. Mm. Well, that's a big thing. I mean, well, that, that is marketing, right? It's networking. It's talking with people, <laughs> creating relationships. Yeah. Oh, very, very cool. So what, what do you feel the future holds for you? What's, what are you looking forward to over the next year or the next coming years? Um... Um, not being afraid to try new things. Yeah. So last year we did like a workshop every single month, um, and it was like my own topic. I could say whatever I wanted to. I could set my own like, research however much I like or like uh, whatever. Um, and so it's just like an in-house workshop for people to know more about health. And in the beginning, I was really terrified. But after doing you know, them, like, I don't know, eight of them or something, 
um, it gets easier. <laughs> so, yeah, it's sort of like you might not really want to do it, but then you just have to do it your own way. I just have to do it my own way and then slowly sort of just not be scared of it and just do it. Um, yeah, like currently I'll practice model works really well for me because we don't have like exorbitant prices and we have, yeah, like, you know, because my passion is actually to adjust Singaporeans because that's why I came to New Zealand, that's why I like sacrificed kind of money and what whatnot to go to New Zealand so that I could come back. Um, and so, mm. um, yeah, like the clinic that I am at now, it sort of resonates with me that way. So like I'm really happy here to serve people and um, do things in a really sort of um, yeah, I just congruent yeah, I guess the word is congruent, congruent with me. Mm. So I'm just happy to keep going. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and then um, yeah, I'll just talk. I don't know. I don't know anything else. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, that's fair enough. I'm just curious because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just curious to see where people are at and, and what's kind of next on the horizon. And if it's just getting really good at practice, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get really good and just keep getting better. Yeah. yeah. And you're in there for the, I mean, I don't know. You, you're you probably in there for the long haul, right? In Auckland? Like, are you planning to go back to Christchurch or anything like that? I honestly, at this stage, I do not know. I do not know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so cause... the way I'm approaching it is like, look, I'm 25. I have probably 40 years more of like full time practice before. Mm. It might not be full time. It might like, still be practice, you know, like after I get old. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> the way I'm approaching it is more sort of like with the end goal in mind. Like, yeah. I want to have the longevity as a practitioner and not. Um, do anything that I will regret hmm. or um, like, you know, if you make some sacrifices now like in terms of the time and your effort and while you're young, you know, do all the things to improve yourself, then the next 40 years would just really be much easier on myself as well. I, I definitely resonate with that. It's Well, I mean, for me, I'll use my different words, but like if I hustle a lot now, and build up a lot of momentum behind me, it becomes a lot easier to maintain that as you continue through the future. So it's yeah. just, I mean, for me, it's just, I'm putting lots and lots of effort into improving myself, learning new skills and abilities, um, having cool conversations like this and learning about what other people are up to around the world because that inspires me and is it's just really interesting to just kind of, I had the idea in my head and I'm really glad you're affirming it. It's like people are the same everywhere chiropractic's yeah. kind of the same everywhere even though the language might be different the place might be different we're all people we're all dealing with the same kind of stuff and it's amazing that chiropractic can be that effective no matter where you are yeah and cool. the key is to really care for people right mm. so if 100%. you're all everywhere and they're all doing things comfort and pain and hardship um, and it doesn't even have to be chiropractic related you can just still care for them and help them and then um, yeah I might have to do some tweaks along the way like change the way you express certain things or like just you know most of the tweaking is done in your own head where you realize hey you know this person is about to get me this yeah. person is um, uh, just expressing like their own discomfort or expressing um, you know some sort of struggle that we have mm. um, yeah, like once I sort of caught on to that, because, you know, I'm sure you know, some patients, you just feel like, don't you understand what I'm saying? I've told it to you like 300 times. Um, but then it's just like them having to struggle through life as well. So, mm. um, yeah, so I try to tell myself that when I get a little bit, um, you know. <laughs> a little bit down so it's their stuff I mean you are you are like we are in a profession where we're dealing with people who have stuff um, and you just yeah I don't, I don't know you just kind of have to learn how to handle that right hmm. so if anyone's really resonating with what you're saying they want to reach out contact you what's the best way to get in touch 
Um, just contact me on Facebook. Uh, yeah, just Facebook. That's easy. I, I'll, I'll throw that in the show notes as well. So if anyone wants to reach out, that's easy. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and then you can also contact us. A lot of NZCC prayers out here. And then I must say that because of the of what my practice is doing, we are um, not the like, traditional kind of practice that um, new grads come into. So like a lot of these bigger firms, they have many clinics. Five for ten or whatever. Mm. Um, but we only just have one here in Singapore, one in KL. Um, and so what we do is a lot more different, like a lot more cozy. And I, I will probably not be able to give you a good take on things like marketing because um, we can't do much of that. <laughs> and then, um, so so yeah, the requirements are different mm. for different firms, very very different. So you know, if you reach out to like Timmy or um, Eve Holmes or Simon Shannon, they'll all be able to give you really good cool. uh, sort of perspective on your different things. I think. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad you said that because I I want to get Tim Lee on here in a couple of weeks as well and just kind of talk about Singapore from from that perspective of being involved in one of those big firms and and seeing what it's like um, in that kind of different yeah. different style different model. Yeah, and um, yeah, we've we, we've had quite a few. It's good. I had Tim Lee, and then uh, <laughs> when my when my personal training wasn't around, we got to adjust each other, which is great. Cool. Because I really. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have some of them in the here as well. So, yeah. Um, just to give you some perspective. Definitely what they do is different, but it's still kind of exactly. Really exactly. And like you said before, you, you just have to find out what's congruent with you and then do that. That is awesome. Lemon, thank you so much. It's been really good catching up with you. It's really fun. Yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. Thank you for all the support you've been showing this platform. If you have any ideas for future episodes or you'd like to be involved, send me a message through the website or your preferred social media. For the resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes or thechirostation.com. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and leave a comment on Facebook. Now go out there and start a conversation today.